Hello and welcome to the session on quadratic equations. This is brought to you by Handa Kafanda. Let us look at a general quadratic equation. That would be of the format of ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Quadratic equation means that the degree of the equation is 2, which is x here, the variable, the degree is 2. The highest power of x is 2. Now this particular equation can have a maximum of two roots. Let us look at them. Say the two roots of the equation are alpha and beta. They are given by minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. If we look at this formula a little closer, plenty of other things emerge. Some of the roots, that is alpha plus beta. Take one of the roots as minus b minus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. Take the other root as minus b plus square root of b square minus 4ac upon 2a. If you add them up, what will emerge is minus b by a. The product of the roots, that is alpha into beta, is given by when we multiply those two roots and you will get c by a. It is also important to know when the roots will exist and when they won't. For that, we need to look at the square root portion, that is d squared minus 4ac in a little more detail. Just think about it. If square minus 4 is less than 0, then I will have a negative number inside the root. In that particular case, alpha and beta will not exist. Or you can say alpha and beta will be complex numbers in that particular case. If b square minus 4ac is equal to 0, that would mean that both its roots will be minus b by 2a. That is the condition for two equal roots. And this is the condition for no roots. But what if my b square minus 4ac is greater than 0? Then there will be two subcases. One, if it is a perfect square. And second, if it is not a perfect square. If it is a perfect square, something like 4 or 64 or 9, I can take a square root of that value. So the roots which will emerge, they will ultimately be rational roots. If the inside the square root is not a square, something like 3 or 5 or 8, then the roots which will emerge, they will be Irrational. If the roots are rational, then you cannot predict much. But let's say if one of the roots is 2 plus root 3, then the other root has to be 2 minus root 3. Why will this happen? Because the root square root portion emerges from b square minus 4ac part. So one of the roots will be minus b plus root 3 upon something, and the second portion will be minus b minus root 3 upon something, and that is why roots will always occur as pairs like these. The questions that we get are something like we are given an equation and we are asked to find out its roots. There are various methods to do that. Suppose the equation is x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. I am taking a very simple case. This can easily be factorized as x minus 2 into x minus 3 is equal to 0. So the two roots which exist in this case are 2 or 3. I recommend use the factorization method as long as possible. If it is not possible, you can also use the formula. Let's see how will, how will we get the roots from the formula. My roots alpha and beta will be minus b. b in this case is minus 5. So this will become 5 plus minus square root of b square. That is 25 minus 4 into a which is 1 into c which is 6. 4 into 1 into 6 is 24 upon 2a that is 2 into 1. So this comes out as 5 plus minus square root of 1 or 1 by 2 which means 6 by 2 or 4 by 2 which means 2 or 3. Another method which can be used for solving the quadratic equation is completing the square method. What I am trying to say is x square minus 5x plus 
into x plus 5 by 2 whole square. Since I am adding the 5 by 2 whole square, I need to subtract a 5 by 2 whole square. You will soon realize why I am doing this. This means the equation can be written as x minus 5 by 2 whole square. Why? x square 5 by 2 whole square minus 2 5 by 2 nx. That is of the format of a square minus 2 ab plus b square. But there is some portion which is left. That is 6 minus 25 by 4. So if I take it to the other side, it becomes 25 by 4 minus 6 or 1 by 4. Now I will take square root of both sides. I will get x minus 5 by 2 is equal to plus minus half. Which means x is equal to 5 by 2 plus minus half. 5 by 2 plus half is 3, 5 by 2 minus half is 2, which means once again I can say my roots are 2 or 3. Whatever method you use, as you can see, you will get the same answer. It is once again recommended to factorize as long as possible. If you are not able to do that, use the formula. You will get the answer for the, from the formula as well. But there are plenty of questions which can be solved only using completing the square method. Say, for example, if the equation given to me is x square minus 5x plus 6 and someone asks me what is the minimum value that it can take, then I will look at this equation x minus 5 by 2 whole square minus 1 by 4. The minimum value it will take is whenever the perfect square portion is 0 or so to say the minimum value for the equation will be minus 1 by 4. Let us see what the equation will be if the roots are provided to us. For example, if the roots are 2 or 3, then I can say my equation will be x minus 2 into x minus 3 is equal to 0, which I can work out to be x square minus 2x minus 3x plus 6 is equal to 0. Also, x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. What I mean is, if I am given the roots alpha and beta, then I can directly say the equation will be x square minus of alpha plus beta into x plus alpha beta is equal to 0. As you can see, b or the coefficient of x is negative of some of the roots here and the c, the constant value is the product of the roots. Stay tuned with us for a graphical analysis of quadratic equations. Thank you.